Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here with another video talking about Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. And this video is just meant to be a guide mainly for beginners who are new to the game and may or may not have had experience in the past with other RTS games. But I've compiled what I deem to be essential information in order to succeed in this game, particularly when it comes to multiplayer. So first of all, if you aren't familiar at all with Realms of Ruin, yes, it is a real-time strategy game. It has some different mechanics than traditional RTS games, like there's no real base building in this game, uh, but there are a few structures that you start with and also structures that you can build as you expand your territory across the map. Uh, but the focus is more on combat, so you build up armies with units that have different strengths and weaknesses. You start off with the weakest units and as you progress and tech up, you unlock access to more and more powerful units. Positioning and microing your units is key to victory. And some units do require a little bit more careful setup than simply attack moving. And then you win by draining the enemy score to zero, which is done by maintaining control of more objectives than your opponent. There are two resources in the game, Command and Realmstone. Command is used to build units, issue some abilities like charge and retreat, and build and upgrade your structures. Realmstone is used to upgrade your units, uh, build higher tech units, and then use special abilities and also build and upgrade structures. Now, as for how you gain these resources, you always have a steady income of command from your command post that you start off with in your base, and you can increase the command gained by capturing and capping Arcane Conduit. So you do have to keep a unit on there until it increases its area size to 100%, and at that point you will get the most command gain, uh, which is 3 per Arcane Conduit, and I think that's every 5 seconds you get 3 command. And then you can also build a structure called a Vision Bastion that will also increase the amount of command you can gain from that conduit. And then you gain 45 Realmstone every time you capture an Arcane Conduit or Victory Point objective on the map. So this is very important to know. And then Harvest Bastions are the structure that are a steady source of Realmstone. If you build that on one of your Arcane Conduits, just make sure, again, that it is capped at 100%, otherwise you won't get the maximum amount of Realmstone from it. Now when it comes to building units, you can build them by just pulling up your Command tab by pressing G. Units are summoned one at a time and spawn from the Realm Gate on your side of the map. Just that structure you can see in the bottom right. And there's a structure called Healing Bastion, which when upgraded can allow you to summon additional units at a time, but Night Haunt are unique in that all of their structures allow you to summon one more unit. So Night Haunt are very good at swarming the map with mass amounts of units a lot more quickly than other factions. And then you can unlock access to higher tier units by upgrading your command post. Upgrades are essential in this game. Uh, you do have pretty small armies, so you'll quickly reach your population cap but most units have one or two upgrades that will greatly increase their efficiency. For many of the unit-specific upgrades, you have to choose one out of two. So if you look at the example there on the right, uh, you can see like two of them that are adjacent to each other. You can pick one of them, and then the other one will be unavailable for the remainder of that match. And there are passive upgrades that just increase the stats of the unit, or upgrades that unlock an ability, which then you have to spend Realm Stoke to activate. But the abilities you get from upgrades tend to be very powerful uh, when used at the right place and time. Moving on to combat. So uh, we've got the combat triangle. You can see there. there's three main types of units. Assault units are good against heavy units. Heavy units are resistant to ranged units, and ranged units are more effective against assault units. And then there's heroic units, which don't really fall under any of the categories and have their own unique role on the battlefield. However, it's important to note that uh, units do have different stats, and we don't really know how much health or damage anything does. Uh, but, for example, uh, Night Haunt have Chain Rasps, which are an assault unit, which, uh, on paper, they should be super effective against uh, the heavy Liberators of the Stormcast. But Stormcast Eternals are a lot tougher, so uh, it's a pretty even match when the two of them get into locked into combat. Uh, one thing to note about just the pathing, units don't really auto-acquire targets as easily as you would expect. Uh, certainly not when compared to other RTS games. For example, uh, you can have a melee unit that is standing very close to other units in combat, but it will not engage until you tell it to do so. Uh, likewise, you can have units that are just sitting there getting shot at by ranged units, and they will not go chase after the units like they do in other games. Uh, you have to tell them specifically what to attack. And uh, you can just do a normal move, or you can do an attack move, which is with the F key, and they will acquire any targets along the path. Uh, one unique thing about this game is combat locking, so units engaged in melee cannot move away until one or the other is destroyed, unless you spend command to use uh, the retreat ability, which will cause the unit to book it back to your command post. And once they're back there, the command post will heal them back to full health. 
Although it's important to note that uh, if you are upgrading your command post, it will not be able to heal anything until that upgrade is complete. And uh, many ranged units have the major weakness of not being able to move and shoot at the same time. They have to stop moving and then set up their weapons, which can take like one or two seconds. And they also have a pretty narrow firing arc. I think it's about like 90 degrees in front of them. So uh, they can't actually shoot anything outside of that arc. So uh, they can easily be countered by simply moving outside of their firing range and attacking from the flanks or rear. So you do have to be pretty careful uh, when setting up ranged units. However, there are some ranged units that uh, don't have to worry about this. Uh, the Disciples of Zinch, for example, have uh, flamers, which can just move and shoot. They don't have any sort of firing arc, which makes them a lot easier to use and quite strong as well. Now, as for movement, uh, typically in RTS games, there are units that move slower and units that move faster. Uh, in this game, it feels like everything moves at pretty much the same speed, even like the Hex Wraiths for Night Haunt, which are cavalry. They might move slightly faster, but it's barely noticeable. And so uh, units are able to move a little bit faster by using special abilities like charge, uh, which all assault units have access to. So when charging, they will move uh, faster, allowing them to better intercept enemy forces. Uh, there are also units that can fly, and while airborne, uh, they move quite a bit faster and gain increased vision, but they cannot attack while in the air nor can they capture or contest arcane conduits or objectives. So when using flyers, just make sure that you land them uh, if you want them in combat or con capturing a, a point. Also, when using retreat, units do move a lot faster and are unstoppable, but you do have to be a little bit careful not to use it at the last second because while enemy melee units might not be able to catch up to a retreating unit, ranged units can shoot down the unit. Uh, you can end up spending the resources for retreat and then the unit dies, so just a waste of resources there. Map control is pretty important in this game. Uh, you gain an economic advantage by controlling more territory than your opponent and being able to maintain control of it. So it's a good idea to keep an eye on that mini-map and see where your opponent is putting their forces and move to undefended enemy positions uh, to take control of their objectives or just moving into their territory to diminish their resource gain. And then avoid fights that you know you can't win, you know, if they have a bunch of superior units coming at you and you're outnumbered, uh, there's no reason to really fight there. You just pull your units back before they get engaged in combat. And if you do get locked in combat, don't be afraid to use the retreat uh, to save your units because building them back up can take a little while unless you're Night Haunt. Uh, winning the match requires you to hold more objectives than your opponents. So uh, the more you have, the faster you will be able to drain the enemy victory point score, as you can see from the gauge there on the bottom right. For winning battles, uh, countering enemy units by building units that are strong against the type that your opponent is using. So if they're just spamming one type of unit, uh, just build the unit that is uh, good against that one. Uh, and especially if they're spamming like a lot of tier 1 units. Uh, tier 2 and tier 3 units are quite a bit stronger. So, you know, if they have like a bunch of tier 1 ranged units, if you build a bunch of tier 2 heavy units, uh, that will be particularly strong against that kind of army. Uh, try to catch your opponent off guard, so if they've just left a few units isolated and are maybe looking elsewhere, aren't paying attention, if you can just uh, attack those units before they have a chance to react, that'll give you an advantage. Upgrading your units is important. If you have the resources, Command and Realmstone, uh, using those special abilities can turn the tide of a battle very quickly, especially abilities that deal area of effect damage. If you use those on clumped up enemies in combat, it can be pretty devastating. And if you do make it to the late game, you can have some pretty spectacular battles. And if you've built up a good enough economy, you should have plenty of resources to use all of those abilities at once. And if you do that before your opponent has a chance to react, uh, you can cause some serious mayhem. So those are the main points I could think of that are good to know when playing multiplayer in Realms of Ruin. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. I know if you really want to get into it, there's a lot more you could go into as for specific strategies against certain builds, but I am still pretty new to the game. I've only played maybe seven or eight matches of multiplayer. Some matchups are definitely more difficult than others, but hopefully this guide is helpful for people who are just starting out. I know it can be very frustrating when you don't know what's going on, and uh, this game doesn't exactly do the best job of teaching you everything you need to know, but uh, once you do know those basics, I think the gameplay is quite fun. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.